Hey everybody, it's been a long time since I've made a video and I got a comment the other day from a Dale Twiddell, Twiddle. <laughs> sorry I butchered your name, but he's curious on how I wired up the controller for my juiced bike with the new Conte controller, how I did that, so I'm going to throw this together. I did have some video when I did it. I just, man, I've just been like burned out on making videos and mostly just editing. So I'm going to throw something together real quick. It's probably not going to be the best edit, but here you go. Here's how I hooked up that controller. Okay, so here's two controllers. Both these controllers are good functioning stock controllers. And the off-road controller was sent to my dad's, and he's using that on his, and it's working out pretty good for him. But I'm going to, I've nipped the ends off of this one here. It is still usable in the future if I need to resolder the wires. I didn't cut them too close. But I'm figuring this should be pretty easy. These should be the motor wires. This should be the speed sensor wire, this white one. And these other ones should be like a ground, a power, and then the hall sensor wires. Pretty easy, that's basic. One of the red ones with the red end is for the headlights. The one with the yellow end, that's the pedal assist. The other one with the two wires, that's for the brake lights. And then these other ones control the display and the throttle and the brakes. So I need to find brakes and the throttle. And here's the new controller. There is some open air inside there. I'm sure this thing's not totally full, but you can see that it's quite a bit bigger than the one they give you factory, the stock one. This one's pretty heavy for its size because it's, it's filled up with silicone and that adds to the weight. But this one here, I'm obviously not going to be able to use this anymore because it's the same size as this. So I'll just have to strap this on. I'm sure I'll just zip tie it. I don't see why zip ties wouldn't hold just fine. So if, if this doesn't work for whatever reason and this controller's bad, I can just plug the old one back in because I'm not going to be cutting any wires on the bike itself. Just like on the other controller I showed for the other the Z1 video, these three right here, or these three right here are going to be the phase wires for the motor. And they're, they are thicker than these wires. I'm a little worried that this connector is not really made for 35 amp, but I am willing to turn the power down. I don't need to run this thing at full power. I will try it at full power, but I got a feeling even if I run it at half power, it's probably going to be just as fast, if not faster, than the old controller anyway. Yeah, I'm just going to get these soldered, and then the other wires are all going to hook up to these. So I'm going to get those soldered on there as well, and then I'll have them all shrink tubed on there. I'm going to have to have some small shrinkies for these. But yeah, let's get to it. I like to clip one wire at a time, just in case. It's always just a good idea to just clip one at a time. A little bit of solder to heat it up. Get it hot, and pour it on. Now I'm also going to be using electrical tape over those when I'm done, so I'm not extremely worried about that at the moment. Okay, so those are ready to go. Now it's time for these. Alright, so let's remember all the shrink tubes on these, shall we? Alright, I'm all done. If I wanted to be totally professional, I could have had a bigger shrink tube pulled back to here and then now pulled it over all of these and shrink wrapped it but okay that wire is done now this wire we don't have to do anything with this one we need to put an XT what on it I'm using an XT90 you could use whatever you wanted but I'm gonna use an XT90 this one's already been used but that's fine and I'm gonna solder those in there so let's do that these are definitely two wires, the power ones, that you never, ever want to clip at the same time. And this one we just need a little tiny bit exposed. This is where I'm going to use my helping hand. Alright, that's the ticket right there. Do 
you're going to go over that end like that. Sometimes the lighter is just easier than holding that big ass torch out. Okay, so now hopefully this snaps in there, and it did, yay. Alright, so we got that. We got the motor wires. We got the power wire itself. So these are the brake wires here. I could just use one of these, or I could just nip them both. You know what, I, I'm going to check and make sure both brakes run off the same one, just in case. Yep, both brakes run off the orange one, so that splits further down the line, so... Orange and black are going to go to my yellow and black. Okay, so here's the final verdict. I tried using the existing pedal assist, and no matter how I wired it up, it wouldn't work. I have the brake light and the headlight connected to this yellow and black wire on the controller. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, before I go any further, I have to show you something. This is the inside of the controller. As you can see, yeah, there is a lot of room in there. There's a lot of nothing going on. But anyway, this is the inside of the controller. This is the wire that powers the headlight. And let me click to another picture here. All right, here's a close-up of that wire right here. There's actually a resistor in there. And I fried that resistor. It's not made to handle the power that this headlight puts out or other headlights. It's supposed to act as a switch, I do believe. So what you need to do is take the resistor out and just put a wire in, like off of a resistor. If you go to Radio Shack and buy any resistor or any fuse or whatever, and it's made to solder in, this is just kind of the pigtail that's hooked to it. And I soldered that in. It's real easy. And I don't know if I had already ruined the fact that it used to be able to go on and off with the switch. But now mine's powered all the time and that's why I put a toggle on it. So if you replace this with a wire right away, there is a possibility that you might be able to shut your headlight off with the switch. And you might not need a toggle. Alright, anyway, carry on. The motor wires are easy. The three phase wires, green, yellow, and blue, match up to the green, yellow, and blue. And then all the other colors match up exact as well. The white to the white, blue to the blue, green to the green, red to the red, and yellow to the yellow. That's easy. And then the power wires, of course, power and ground. That's pretty easy too. And then the brakes. All you need for the brakes is the orange wire. The orange wire connects to the positive brake wire here. You don't even need to hook up the ground. So just this orange one goes to the positive. In this case on this controller is the yellow one for the brakes. Alright, the throttle was a little bit tricky to figure out but I did figure it out. On this plug here the white wire is the signal wire and it goes with the blue. The black wire is the ground wire and the gray wire is the power wire which is where it kind of threw me off. I thought red would be the power wire, but it's not. So gray to red, black to black, and white to blue for this plug here. So this big plug that doesn't, the plug that doesn't go to the motor, the other big plug, the orange wire is the brake wire. It goes to this yellow wire on the controller. It's yellow and black, but it doesn't need the ground because it gets the ground from over here. So if you want to hook the ground up to the other ground, that's fine too. That's the way I did have it hooked up but it doesn't need to be hooked up. And all these other wires here we will not be using. Those were for the display. And I'm just going to cut those short and tape everything up here. This of course is the connector for the LCD, the display. And these three wires here are for the pedal assist. And see what I did here? I made the mistake of cutting this clip too short. I thought I was going to be able to use the pedal assist that's on the bike already, but it doesn't appear to be working. I've tried these in every order and I haven't gotten it to work. I have gotten the red light to flash down there, but it doesn't seem to do anything for giving power to the motor. And I know these wires actually do give power to the motor because I crossed 
these two and it made the motor take off and the bike almost ghost rode across the living room floor on me. So I'm going to get this plug back on here and then I'm going to buy one of those pedal assist sensors and magnet and I'm going to JB weld it on there like I did with my Z because I do want the pedal assist. Okay, I've got the pedal assist connector fixed now so I'll just have to get that pedal assist magnet and sensor and that'll be working but I'm gonna get this thing put together so I can see how this baby does on throttle alone. So that's basically it. That's all there is to wiring it. Now I'm just gonna show you real quick how it looks on a bike. Okay, just per normal, turn the power on the battery. Then I turn the power on here for my display. And the one thing I don't like is this wire isn't attached anymore because this was the one that went to the display up that was up here, the stock one. So I'm going to have to kind of hide that a little bit, maybe get a cap for this or something. That would be pretty much impossible to find, but if I see one, I'll buy it. And then what I had to do is I had to run the wire. I had to kind of take a shortcut with the wire um, and run it this way and hide it behind there because it wasn't long enough to go the full distance. See these fenders right here? Those are suggested by a Facebook scrambler group person by the name of Mario Coletto, I believe. Um, I think they were like 12 bucks on Amazon. I'll throw up a link, but you just zip tie them. And they're, they're pretty flimsy. There's nothing to them, but that's all the stronger they need to be. They serve the purpose. Uh, the controller up there, it does have a little dirt on it because I haven't cleaned it off since I put the fenders on, but yeah, turned out to be a pretty clean install and I'm really happy with it. Back to Mario, he did also put on these thicker, knobbier tires. They are heavier, but I like them. They look extremely durable. I saw him, he had a huge staple or a giant staple stuck in it and it didn't leak air. So I'm thinking I'm going to probably get those tires next and I don't care if they're heavier or not. I want the extra protection and I've already got like a half a pound of slime in each tire anyway. So it'll probably even out by the time I'm done because I'm not going to slime those. So yeah, if you're not on the Facebook Scrambler page, you should get on there because if you're looking to upgrade stuff, there's a lot of good info on there. That's the only reason I go to Facebook. So yeah, do you guys on Facebook, if you're wondering why I have nothing on my Facebook page, it's because I can't stand Facebook. I'm only there for certain things. So yeah, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this video helps you out if you do decide to take the plunge. It's well worth it, just as long as you're decent with soldering and wiring. It's, it's not too bad. You can see in the video, it's not that hard. All right, thanks for watching. Peace.